They called. They said Andrew Wiggins shouldn't get traded for a box of goddamn cereal. Uh, basically, a box of cookies. Where was you at, LeBron? Now somebody talking about your son, and people are pretty much just breaking down the game. I haven't heard one person call your son a bus, but you already can't take it. Can't say nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm uh, I think they know who we are. Huh? You think you know me? Know who we are? Lakers. I'm looking at you, man. We're coming for these kids. Come on. Yeah. He's the leader of Lakers World Order, bringing you his opinion on all things sports. Angry Lakers fan. All right, y'all. Before I let y'all hear what Kwame Brown had to say, um, I just want to say this. Um, this is all due to LeBron James apparently leaving social media because everybody's being negative about his son. Um, I'm going to just say I personally don't like it because it's not his son's fault. It's LeBron's fault. But, um, yeah, man, apparently LeBron James is leaving social media and he because he's tired of all the negativity that goes along with it. But uh, this is what had Kwame Brown go on like a almost 40 minute epic rant. <laughs> he annihilated LeBron James. So I'm going to just let y'all hear this. Y'all grab your popcorn. There will be no visuals. So y'all can just sit back, relax, have your earbuds in or whatever and enjoy the show. Make sure y'all hit the like. Make sure y'all subscribe if y'all new. And uh, yeah, man, enjoy y'all morning. Nah, uh-uh, uh-uh, hold them kids, little nigga. Yeah, uh-uh, Craig and Day-Day. <laughs> nah, nah, nigga. Hold them kids, little nigga. Hold them kids, little, little, you know what? Nah, hold them kids, poppy. <laughs> Where you going? It ain't over yet. Where you going at? Yeah, where you going? You all right? <laughs> I heard LeBron, the king, is leaving Twitter space. Oh, oh, this y'all, this is your king. This is your king. A nigga who had the easiest career ever from a media standpoint. Let, let, let me explain something to y'all, yo. Y'all shout out to y'all. Come on in this thing. This man is running from the media. The mainstream media is really not even going in on his son. It's people on YouTube that's talking about his son. This, they done raised this big tall nigga so fragile that he is upset that y'all YouTubers, that us YouTubers are talking about his son. Oh, little precious thing he is. Oh. <laughs> oh. Nah, TP, don't ask me what happened. Nigga, your homeboy LeBron just tweeted out, he finna leave social media is too negative. Hold on, wait a minute, fake ass king. You supposed to die with the troops, nigga. Where was you at when they was berating uh, Russell Westbrook at? Where was you at, LeBron? Yeah, I could have sworn motherfuckers called Russell uh, Westbrook, West Brick, your teammate, a guy that you asked to be there. You said, I think this will work. I mind the game. I know the game. Shit, bring in West. We're going to win not one championship, not two championships, not three championships. That shit didn't happen. Guess who they blame? Russ. See, this is what happened when you have a coddled ass, soft ass life. This is what happens when motherfuckers coddle you since the seventh and eighth grade. You raised a coddled ass boy that don't know how to mind the game. And now you running scared because somebody finally bust your little perfect ass bubble. See what I'm saying? Stop building these people on pedestals that they cannot live on. 
This nigga is a coward. One thing that said wrong about his son, because he got it wrong. This boy does not know how to play basketball. That's okay. Let him make $20 million playing a video game. You LeBron, that's fine. Not a problem. But nobody else you had any of this kingship for. Where was the king at with Westbrook? Uh, LeBron, we played in the league at the same goddamn time. They called me a bona fide scrub. Where was you at, LeBron? They called, they said Andrew Wiggins shouldn't get traded for a box of goddamn cereal, uh, basically a box of cookies. Where was you at, LeBron? Now somebody talking about your son, and people are pretty much just breaking down the game. I haven't heard one person call your son a bus, but you already can't take it. The media that you participated in, that you the king, that you could have protected these players, you ain't say shit until it's your darling, soft-ass son. Now, all of a sudden, the media is negative. You know, now that Ryan Clark and some people that y'all got to respect done said they ain't like this shit. See, I don't give a fuck if you don't respect me. I said it from day one. I didn't need to wait to see what it is. I knew it was some bullshit nepotism don't ever supposed to hit sports no 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 sports is that thing that bring a nation together it's competition it's supposed to be the only thing that's real when everybody else fighting and arguing and going to war nigga sports can stop a war it bring and unify people nigga you don't ever disrespect the game and i thought you knew that boy you said you mind the game and if you mind the game, then you never, ever disrespect the game. And your son is a disrespect to this game. I don't give a fuck who call it hate. I don't give a fuck who call it whatever. Your son is a disrespect to this game. He didn't have to compete. It's disrespectful to everybody that got to sit in those hotels. Listen at the way these bitch ass niggas sound. Oh, uh, Brownie James don't have to stay at a Motel 6. Bitch, they'll leave the light on for you. The hell you mean? Why is Bronny James too good to get the light left on for him? It's good enough for everybody goddamn else. Now with Bronny James, we can't leave the light on for him. That commercial ran all the way around the world and everybody loved it. But it ain't good enough for LeBron James, huh? Yeah, it ain't good enough for the Bronny. The Kane, maybe he's starting to believe the bullshit they say about him. Maybe he's starting to believe this perfect-ass, fake-ass image. 38 years, he wanted the same box. <laughs> 37 years, he ain't never made a mistake. You niggas believe in Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, too, don't you? You niggas believe in Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, too, don't you? Now, Savannah is a nice-looking woman, and she, she got a nice setup, but he supposed to be the king. And I ain't never heard no king without no concubine. But you niggas will believe anything. You niggas will believe anything. Nigga be pissing on your forehead. You can see his meat out. And somebody will tell you it's raining. He'll be like, you know, it is cold out here. It probably is rain. Lame duck ass fools. This man is bailing now. This man ain't stand up and be a king yet. <laughs> no wonder he ain't stand up next with Brother Brown, Jalen Brown. No wonder he'll kneel down with Kaepernick. Matter of fact, anybody seen Kaepernick lately? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it ain't a just cause and it ain't no cameras and it ain't no accolade. Anybody seen Colin Kaepernick light-skinned, fake, black ass lately? Huh? Anybody seen him? No. All uh, right, he'll probably be back around when another nigga get killed. That's the only time these fake ass race hustlers care about a nigga is when they dead. But this nigga is running now that his son is being talked about after he said this boy was ready to play the game. LeBron, all you have to do is apologize to the NBA players that you disrespected. Say you was wrong. Take back this boy contract and let him go play the video game. It's very easy. You the king. You can end this shit right now. You don't got to run from social media. 
allow your son to be what your son really is, a gamer. There's nothing wrong with that. He's not a gamer on the court. He is a gamer on the game. Take all this shit back. Let this boy play the game. If you can't handle the pressure, Michael Jordan, they talked about Michael Jordan gambling. They almost damn near blame Michael Jordan for his daddy's death. LeBron, you are the only player in NBA history that it's almost like it's a crime to say you a piece of shit. It's almost a crime to say you are a piece of shit. How? Why? Why is it a crime to say LeBron is a piece of shit? Even if he ain't, why is it a crime to say he is? You can talk about everybody goddamn else. You wanted to force your son on the world. You wanted everybody to believe this is nepotism. And I knew, because I fight for that nigga that nobody want to fight for. I fight for that nigga from the hood that's trying to get his mama a house. I don't like none of this type of shit. I would have told LeBron James from limb to limb. I fight for that underdog. I never like this. If you're not going to, this is just like them white boys. If you're not going to make it a competition, Bronny James is just like them white boys then. You don't like it when it's white. Why would you like it if it's black? A lot of you motherfuckers just straight up prejudice. That's what it is. If a white boy had done this, if Larry Bird would have put his son in front of a black boy just because he Larry Bird and had the motherfucker scoring four points with a heart condition, man, LeBron would have been on a knee. He would have got them prayers and allegiance to the black flag and all this weirdo shit. But now we see, we got the weakest king we ever seen. Your son, you tried to get your son to lead and make everybody like it. And then we don't like it, we reject it. Now the mode of sports is too negative. But Westbrook can be called West Brick and all of your teammates and everybody can be thrown under the bus. Even your ignorant, arrogant, lying ass can say that your sorry ass son is better than some of these players that you watching on NBA League Pass. And now that it turns out that he ain't better than nobody in the G League, now you want to run. Now you want to run. So you talk the big game, LeBron. But now when it was time to do the walking, you want to run. That's sad. Ain't nobody tell you to disrespect NBA players the way you did. Now you need to, before you run, issue an apology to all the players that played the game that day that you was watching on lead pad. You need to issue a formal apology before you run. Before they let your candy ass run, you need to issue an apology for all those players you was watching on lead pass to say that your son was better than, you need to beg for their humble apology. You need to beg for their acceptance, Mr. King, since now that we see a little adversity to make you run. Well, we saw this already, a little adversity like, you know, not winning a championship and not living up to being the king. You ran to Miami. And now you're going to keep running. Now you're running off social media. What a goddamn shame. And you supposed to be the king. <laughs> All you niggas been windmilling for this nigga. This dude that can't take no scrutiny. This dude that I had the whole world talking about me, nigga. And everybody know what don't kill you make you stronger. What happened to y'all king? A few days. A few days of talking about this man, he run. Can you agree that it was a good money move? I always said it was just about money. This wasn't no good money move. This was disrespectful to the game. This is disrespectful to any kid that's in the park putting in extra work, thinking that they can make it to the NBA. That's why I never liked it. See, there's kids that grow up in the hood and they got hoop dreams. That's the reason why they put that gun down. They think they can be Allen Iverson. That's why they love them so much. They think they can go to prison, get out, and play ball like Allen Iverson. The hood love AI. The hood love them. They don't love LeBron. They can't connect with him. They can't identify with him. He's a king that's never seen. 
He's a king that's never touched. He's a king that only tweets out thoughts and ideals. That ain't nobody that can, can talk to and connect with the people. That's fool's gold. That's fool's gold. This is a makeshift king, a made up king. You don't run from the people, you connect with them. <laughs> you don't cry when your son being talked about, when you done had teammates that you done broke bread with, that they calling this man West Brook in front of West Brick in front of his wife. No. The same way you shielding your son, the same way you could have shielded your teammates. Same way you could have shielded your coaches. Just today, you don't even want to give your coaches props for getting Dalton Connect. You know what this arrogant little fucker said? He said, oh, no, <laughs> it wasn't that the Lakers got it right. It was that 16 other teams got it wrong. <laughs> I'm so good as the king. You stupid motherfucker. Every time the Lakers organization don't get the players you want, you blame the Lakers organization. Every time somebody don't play well, it's they fault. Even though you making them change their game, even though you making them shoot threes, every time something go wrong, it's either the coach, the teammates, or the team. Now, the one time they get it right, the Kane can't say, y'all got it right this time. Thank you. We got a hell of a young rookie. Oh, I forgot, because the Kang ain't the one that handpicked him. We seen who you handpicked, dummy. You handpicked Russ, didn't work. You handpicked a few players that you done traded, and you traded away some players that you should have kept. And then you waste a, a roster spot on your goddamn son. That's the worst shame of it all. And now you got everybody in the media trying to protect your fragile ego and you got people in the media scared to say that you full of shit say no damn nepotism this is a soft ass dad that's making a soft ass son even softer the boy can't even play in the g league you're supposed to respect your name enough to say nah my boy ain't ready and it's okay to say that don't disrespect this game. It's okay to say my son is not good enough. My son didn't put the time in. My son would have rather played video games than to work like I did. It's okay. This is a new generation. But you supposed to be the king. You got Gilbert Arenas booty clapping it up. You got all these media pundits scared to say the truth. And now the truth be told, you running. <laughs> you running like a motherfucker. This was nepotism. And all you people that thought this shit was nepotism, it's okay. You don't have to apologize. This was never about no damn nepotism. This is about elitist status. This is I'm more important than you. Shut up and deal with it. That's what this is about. And so what y'all thought was nepotism, he took an inch and went for a mile. Not only do we not want this boy to play, uh, not only do we want him to have a guaranteed contract, we're going to have him a four-year contract for a 54, 55th pick. The same scale they want you to look at for not talking about him is the exact same scale you can look at to destroy him. You name another 55th pick that got a four-year guaranteed contract, especially on a storage franchise like the Lakers, without no work being done, with a heart attack right before that, with four points in college, you name another 55th pick that get that type of treatment. You name another 55th pick that played some of the games he played and ain't been cut yet. You name the 55th pick that they got a fucking plan to develop. You name the 55th pick that don't have to go to San Diego. California. We understand road trips, but goddamn, this is San Diego, California. It's still in California. You name the other 55th pick that get all this preferential special treatment, and he still sucks. And then I'll stop talking about him. You name the 55th pick 
that was on television and it was televised. Name that. So this scale that y'all trying to use to keep people from talking about them, why in the hell is ESPN and First Take talking about them? Why every pass, why everything he do is being highlighted like it's a great thing? When the boy can't play defense, he don't understand pick and roll. He don't understand his, to put his butt to the baseline, ball you man. He don't understand the simple principles of the game. And he has a daddy named LeBron James who's supposed to mind the game and had a coach in Gilbert Arenas that's supposed to be an all-star that know how to coach. None of this shit makes sense. So the only thing they can do is wrap it up in a big old bouquet of you hating on a black man. Well, Kwame Brown is black. Andrew Wiggins is black. Michael Oliver Candy is black. Anthony Bennett is black. Westbrook is black. All these players throughout the years that have been ridiculed and disrespected, JaVale McGee, last time I checked, is black. Nobody ever said nothing. Nobody ever cared about he's a black man. Now, all of a sudden, this, these elites come out to protect their elites. And I would say with my whole heart and my chest standing straight out, fuck each and every last one of you. You didn't say that for 19-year-old Kwame. I got no remorse for none of you. I don't have to participate and call Bronny a bus because I didn't like it when I was called a bus. But Bronny James is actually the, the boy that I was speaking of. Stars are not born. They are created. And you are watching one that they're trying to create right before your eyes. They trying to get you to unsee what you already see. They trying to get you to like what you don't like. They trying to embarrass and disrespect you for your common sense. And now LeBron James is trying to run just like the cur that he actually is. A good basketball player, though. Love the way you're playing right now. You could have averaged a triple-double your entire career. That's how good LeBron is. Shit, LeBron probably in his younger years could have averaged a 30-point triple-double. But this right here, some of you call it hate. That's okay. You niggas will catch up to the party late. And I want you to go look your son in the eye and let him know. Look here, son. You can do anything you want to do. You can make it anywhere unless you go up against one of LeBron James' sons or his son's sons. Yeah, I can't wait to LeBronny have a son, and I can't wait to uh, Bryce have a son. So they can take all y'all kids' jobs, and you niggas better like it, too. When your son come home crying, and he putting in that goddamn work averaging 24, or uh, whatever Quincy Oliveri averaging 28, and still can't get in the fucking league, still can't get a look, I want you to say, it's okay, son. You know what I'm saying? That's what's supposed to happen. Kwame Brown told us, in order for one to win, another got to lose. And right now, son, it's your turn to lose. This is for the black community, son. You are losing for the black community. That's the king right there. You, you a peasant, son. You know? He the king, you a peasant. And I'm a peasant. And so you just, it don't matter about hard work when it comes to them. You just shut your goddamn mouth and be happy that a black man in your image has done made it. Yeah, dad, but what about you told me to work hard? I could be, shut up, boy. I told you that's the king now. Huh? Don't give a damn about no working hard. That's the king. Now you let the king, son, take your spot, boy. I don't give a damn if you beat his ass every day. That's the king, boy. <laughs> Go look your son in the eye, give him a hug, and tell him that. And that's what essentially you soft ass niggas saying now. That's what you niggas saying now. I tell my son, you can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens you. And as long as you put your mind to it. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about nobody else. You do it. If it ain't you. Then it ain't right. Don't mean he gonna listen. But it's the truth. If it ain't you. It ain't right.
Kwame, you funny and so fun. I make a lot of truth in a joke. Yeah. See, I, I learned how to be a funny, you know. When you growing up around niggas getting shot, niggas going to jail, police fucking with you, niggas throwing dope in a fire pit, niggas throwing dope in a little barrel that they keep burning, even in the daytime, make sure they stay ahead of the police. When you grow up like that, at any given moment, they can go left. You know, you kind of learn to make a lot of truth going a joke. You kind of learn to laugh at shit other motherfuckers might not laugh at. Because, nigga, we don't know when we can get to laugh again. Niggas might be going to jail, B. So, yeah, I'll laugh at shit you niggas might take too serious. But I know this. <laughs> that ain't no motherfucking cane. Y'all can stop conning this guy off as the cane. Yeah, yeah, stop pawning, stop selling this guy as somebody's king. If he can't take a little bit of scrutiny, he's no king. If he can't accept when he's wrong about Westbrook, when he's wrong about his son, when he's wrong about Darvin Ham, when he's wrong about a few things, then he is never going to accept anything. This ain't no king, this is a dictator. You call him Dictator James. That's what you do. Because everything got to go Dictator James' way. Yeah, I want my son in the league. You damn right. Yeah, I want my son. Okay, he got. He ain't good. Okay, I lied. He ain't going to say that. He go to the G League, but guess what, though? He going to stay at home with me. He ain't going on the road. This is a goddamn dictator. This ain't no king. And all y'all media pundits, all y'all kiss my ass. And all of y'all trying to sell this off as a black thing and black people should be proud. You as a black father would do that. No, the fuck I wouldn't. Go ask my son. He mad at me right now. I don't give a motherfucker nothing that they don't earn. You go ask my boy right now, would you get something for me you don't earn? And he'll tell you, hell to the no. I'm like that in real life, though. Y'all motherfucker, you know you would, Kwame. You would do it for your son. Oh, I got sons out here. Go ask them. Go ask what they'll tell you. They might tell you something worse, but the bottom line in the end of the day is daddy said no. Go earn it. Go fucking earn it. It's better that way when you earn it. You can look yourself in the mirror when you earn it. You can love and hug yourself more when you earn it. Not your motherfucking daddy. You was birthed a man and I'm going to raise one. Whether you like it or not. Yeah, whether you like it or not. We're going to stand on man principles around here. When they get a little rough and shaky. When they get a little turbulence. It ain't going to be no running. <laughs> if you listen to this tool of this. Yeah, it's a little bit of running over there in the king shit. Shit don't go their way. There's a little bit of running going on, I see. <laughs> it's a little bit of running going on. <laughs> nigga, we don't run, nigga. <laughs> Ain't no running. Ain't no folding, nigga. We face the media every day. Nigga, they talked about my daddy, my mama, me, whoever. Nigga, we face the media every single day. Nigga, it ain't up with words. You ain't never heard sticks and stones, LeBron? You didn't teach your son sticks and stones may break your bones, but words would never hurt him. Oh, you didn't teach him that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You'll give it to your son. You'll give it. Go ask him, nigga. It wasn't no super sweet 16 around here. What did you do to get a sweet 16? Did you graduate yet? What'd you do? You know, <laughs> sweet what? I wish I would go buy you a goddamn liability that I got to take care of and the insurance go up and your ass probably going to speed and might kill yourself in it. You know how many people I went to school with, their mama and daddy wanted to call them. They bought them a Z71 truck when they were 16 years old. And that same truck was their goddamn graveyard. They end up running into a goddamn tree and their mama and daddy had to put flowers on the side of the goddamn road. You know how many times I've seen that? Hmm? You know how many times I done seen some cracked out ass kids? I live in a town 
to where it's a, it's set it's damn near segregated. It's some rich ass white folks where I'm from, and most of their kids ain't shit. Most of them dope addicts. Most of them on drugs. They ain't got to worry about no money. They ain't got to worry about no place to stay. But most of them dope thing. You know why? Because daddy and mommy took care of everything they needed. Daddy and mommy wanted to make sure little Jimmy was okay. And now little Jimmy can't goddamn take care of little Jimmy. Little Jimmy need mommy and daddy for everything little Jimmy need. Yeah, so I don't do super sweet 16s. I don't do giving you shit you didn't earn. I don't do none of that. If you don't earn it, you don't get it. Ain't nothing good that you don't work for. Ain't a motherfucking thing good that you don't work for. And what LeBron did was what's wrong with this goddamn generation. This soft-ass participation generation. This I want it now. These kids that's killing their goddamn parents over Jordans, this is the reason why. They don't have to earn nothing. They don't have to put no sweat equity in. You telling me Bronny James was at the park going over one move until he got them, got so tired he wanted to faint? You telling me he did that? No. This is the air-conditioned baby. <laughs> this is the air-conditioned, great gym, buff floor-ass kid. And that's why he don't know how to get dirty with it. That's why he passed the ball so quick. That's why you don't see what you're supposed to see. This LeBron James' son. Look, I, my daddy was in prison, and I thought I was a shit. I came in that motherfucker off rip. <laughs> Michael Jordan, you supposed to be the shit. Let's go one-on-one. -on -one. Ask anybody in the MCI Center. Y'all think I was quiet. I just learned that motherfucker didn't want to hear what I had to say. So I learned to shut the fuck up. <laughs> but I wasn't quiet. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> you still like that? Nigga, you 39. Come on, let's go one-on-one. -on -one. I don't want to hear all this in the past shit. Let's see what you can do now. Ask anybody. That's exactly what happened. For all you some bitches thinking I was just quiet. I took this sport serious. This is a competition to me. I wish I would have had all them trainers and all this shit. Nigga, I made it to the number one draft pick. Gilbert, you talking all this shit, bitch? Let me explain something to you. I made it to the number one draft pick with the police kicking in my door over 30 some times. Bitch, nigga, you do information. You look it up every day. Go look up how many times the police kicked in 913 MLK and 1610. Well, they didn't kick in 1610. 913 MLK in Brunswick, Georgia. Go look at how many times the police and the GBI and the feds kicked in that door. Go look at how many times, nigga. <laughs> you looking at a 14-year-old that was sitting on the porch working a job, nigga. McDonald's <laughs> in high school while being a McDonald's All-American. Nigga, basketball was my second hobby. And I made it to the number one draft pick. Imagine if a motherfucking kid from the hood had access to LeBron James trainers. Imagine a kid from the hood that goddamn doing this for real, trying to get up out of this motherfucker for real. Imagine a kid from the hood not having all the money LeBron have and all that shit. Just imagine them having the access to the proper shoes, the proper diet, the proper training. LeBron James had all this afforded to him and still don't mind the game. Imagine these goddamn kids in the hood motherfucking having that when you can look up 913 MLK in Brunswick, Georgia. That's why a motherfucker can't tell me shit. Once you look up that address, nigga, and you find out what the fuck I already know, a motherfucker can't tell me shit. That's why I do not apologize, and I don't want to hear shit out of nobody's mouth. You niggas would have died in my position, nigga. You niggas would have died before the league, and you niggas would have died during the league, nigga. You soft-ass, mushmelly niggas that can't handle nobody talking about you. Nigga, I had brothers going to prison every other day, nigga. I could have went to prison. And you niggas talking about, what? <laughs> Man, please. This soft-ass goddamn shit y'all got going on. I can't do it.
I don't want to hear. Imagine them motherfucking kids in the hood getting access to what Bronny got access to, and you niggas want to sit here and cry for this boy. You motherfucker, it's just basketball, B. You niggas want to cry for this boy like he can't take no scrutiny. Almost like he a lady or something. You niggas sad. You niggas sad. You niggas don't give a fuck about no black community because nigga, I'm black. And you motherfuckers enjoy it every time they said, Bonafide Scrub. You motherfuckers enjoy it every minute of West Brick. It's just them white folks in the liberal media paid so much for LeBron and Bronny. They done branded him and they told you niggas not to be mad at Bronny and Bronny James because every other nigga with money, most of you niggas mad at. It's funny how white people still controlling you niggas. It's the only nigga with money you niggas ain't mad at. I wonder why. But y'all enjoy y'all night. I'm enjoying every minute of y'all king running like a bitch. <laughs> I'm going to laugh. Matter of fact, let me let y'all see me. I'm going to laugh all motherfucking night long. I'm going to go out and do the stanky leg. Yeah. I'm going to go out and do the stanky leg um, with my Michael Kors on. You know what I'm talking about? I'm going to go out and do the stanky leg. Y'all king running like a bitch. <laughs> y'all want to see my face? Huh? Huh? <laughs> That nigga say, I can't do this. Social media has gotten too negative now. I just got to go. I'll see y'all. King hat emoji. Crown.